Good evening, people. Uh, I decided to film a short uh, extemporary video uh, because I have another project going on that I haven't even mentioned to you about. So now I'm gonna say a few words about it. And the project is a wood splitter, a hydraulic wood splitter. So basically it's just a hydraulic cylinder which uh, pushes the log uh, through a blade which sp splits it. And I am now using my TOS SN63 lathe, which is still outside. And it's waiting to go in its home, which I think will not happen uh, in a very long time. I hope so. Next week I will have some more news for you. But now let me show you a little bit what I'm doing. Um, I am working on a piece of 20 mm thick steel, which is uh, 3 quarter inch, I think. And I am making a hole in the middle uh, by, by turning. And these holes I drilled on my milling machine. And now let me show you how I hold uh, square things uh, on my 3 jaw chuck. I have a round piece welded on the back side with four tacks like this and I have centered this um, this stock to the correct place uh, I made some uh, scratch drawings on this plate and that's how I located this one it's not uh, perfectly accurate but it doesn't need to be, it's just fine for this application. Uh, the origi original plan was to uh, set up my forge chuck in this lathe, but I ran into a problem that I cannot open these nuts which hold the chuck in place. Uh, I don't have um, um, a good wrench, I need to get one. But uh, this was a quick solution that I often like to use. But uh, since I have a forger chuck for this lathe, I would have liked to use it, but no, I cannot. Um, okay, and I have a little bit of a gap between the stock and, and the plate. So I think I, had, I should actually have a little bit more, but uh, a gap is a gap. So, I guess I can show you one, one pass, and even though the walking conditions are pretty extreme in here, I am still wearing glasses, and I always do. And by the way, about this lathe, I simply love this. this it's a great lathe. It's very accurate. So far, I haven't found a single problem with accuracy on this lathe. Uh, the dials are perfectly accurate, they, they actually take what you dial in and uh, the spindle bearing has no play at all. And the chalk is extremely accurate within a few hundreds of a millimeter and what else? Uh, it turns no taper at all, no measurable taper, just as my smaller lathe uh, by just uh, holding the work in the chuck and with um, with tailstock support it makes about 200 per 100 millimeter so that's also pretty good on this size lathe and what else uh, it seems to be in pretty amazing condition also I think I showed you the ways already in the video, the first video about this lathe, but maybe I can show you a little bit more. I can't say that they are perfect, but because there are no, <coughs> the, the original grinding marks are not visible anymore, but it wasn't very long ago that they still were. I cannot feel with my finger Uh, the gap in here, and same with the other side. 
I would say almost perfect. And this is not uh, not the place of the most wear, but it's not very from, far from it either, and it's not not at all different in here. And just look at this quill. Here you can see the original machining marks. It's so oily, so it's, it has a glaze, but maybe you can see. So, I'm really digging this lathe, and it's very powerful, and it will not shatter even with uh, pretty wide um, uh, parting cuts. So, very, very, very happy. Okay, now let me show you one pass. I have already dialed in five millimeters, so it's taking out five millimeters of diameter and two and a half millimeters per side. Uh, the speed is 500 rpm and the feed is pretty low. It's, it's the slowest speed on the slate, which is um, 0.08 mm per revolution, which is like three or four thousands per revolution. But this boring bar seems to like slow feeds and, and uh, uh, deep cuts. Okay, let's see. Whoops, no gearing. No. And also, now let me mention a few problems that I don't like about this lathe. And mostly it is because it's so big and it's, it's not very light to use. Uh, when you move the tailstock you have to uh, open up all of these nuts which you have to secure in before you start drilling or using the live center. Uh, but on the other hand, which is nice, is I have this handle, which is very handy for using uh, for using uh, for moving the tailstock. And <coughs> these these dial wheels are pretty stiff. I think I might need to open up the gib a little bit. And also this uh, this feed switch, which is just like on my two little lathes located here. Um, it's it's very Soviet to operate. You you just have to ram it in and out also. But that's the way it is. It's a big lathe. Okay, now let's take the cut, the clutch, and feed on. Here we go. It's breaking the chip real nice. I'm following the dial. Doing the last half a millimeter by hand. Okay, here we go. And also, not sure if I showed you earlier, but this lathe also has a rapid traverse, which is great. It's uh, absolutely necessary for lathe this size. Okay, I will get back to you. Now I'm gonna show you the other things that I have uh, for my project that's going on now. And for my workshop layout, um, I will get back next week. And I think I still haven't even answered all of your comments, uh, but I hope I maybe to today evening I will answer the rest of them. And one of you actually sent me some AutoCAD drawings for my um, for my workshop, which is awesome. I will use them. I think they will actually be the base of my f my whole layout. I still haven't thanked him, but now I will thank him, and thank you. But I will get back to the workshop layout next week, when I have the other news also. <laughs> Here, um, these two U-beams, U160, 160 millimeters in width, will be the base, the frame for my splitter. They will be welded back to back. 
like this and I will have a 40 millimeter um, piece in between, between them which you can see here 10 millimeters thick and then I have some other materials this will be the end cap for the cylinder and this will be the blade support and this is gonna be uh, many things <laughs> as well as this one and I have a little bit of a mess in here but the cylinder is here the cylinder tube and this side is ready to be welded to the end cap and the other side is here I have some threads in, it's still pretty oily so the other cup where the ram goes through is here. I have already made it. I can show you it in a minute. And the ram itself is right here. I have also prepared it. It's now ready. It, and this is a 60 millimeter um, ram. And I have a 50 millimeter uh, fit for the piston and M20 threads. Um, and the stroke of the cylinder will be around 1150 millimeters. So around a little bit over 4 feet, I think. Uh, and the piston diameter is 100 millimeters or 4 inch. And when attached to my truck, the power force should be around. 16 tons, metric tons, which should be easily enough. But now let me take you inside and show you the piston. And here, by the way, I have a piece of, um, it's a mystery quality, um, wear steel. <coughs> it, uh, the strength should be, <coughs> should be around 800 to 1000. MPA, which is uh, over half uh, the, the strength of uh, normal steel. And I will use it to make uh, one or two uh, blades. Okay, here you can see the piston. 100 millimeters or 4 inch diameter. It has a two-way seal and an M20 hex cap screw to hold it to the piston. It came out pretty nice. And here you can see the end cap for the rod to go through. This is also finished. It has a dust seal and a guide ring and the seal. And the seal also has a little guide ring. And it has some milled slots for tightening it. And the thread is um, it's about M92 by one and a half millimeters. And let me show you. I made this cap to hold, um, hold the seal in place. I still have to shorten this little screws a little bit because the thread is a little bit too short for these bolts just a minute okay so uh, the seal is held in place by this little cap which is screwed on with these four M4 uh, bolts or screws And this pattern is just hand drilled, so it only will fit one way. And the fit here is pretty accurate. Okay, I guess that's it. I think I will post uh, maybe one or two more videos about this. Maybe one from uh, the building progress and other one, other one 
from the first testing. Okay, something more for you to, to watch again. Okay, thank you and I will get back to you very soon. Bye. And another goodie which I found from flea market. And this is a Reisenhauer made in Germany. RHF250 chalk, 3 geo chalk. And I think this chalk, when new, cost. Actually, I have no idea how expensive this has been. But it is very, very expensive. And this is unused. It still has some original grease. And no, absolutely no marks of use. And I think this is about as good as a chalk can be for a manual lathe. It actually even has um, changeable keys for the for the jaw ways. You can see. And there is something very special about this chalk uh, because um, the scroll is not like we are supposed uh, to see them. You can see that the toothing under these jaws is a little bit different than normal. It's um, it's smaller and it's it has more angle. And I still don't know how it works. But I think it should be pretty fast to use and durable. I think so. And it only has this one place where you can tighten the jaws. And uh, this chalk I bought for my 1K625 lathe, which I still haven't finished, as you very well know. But I will finish it. And this chalk will be the chalk for that lathe. And they will together be great, <laughs> I think so. I'm very, very excited to get that lathe running again and put this chalk on it. It really deserves this chuck, and this chuck deserves that machine. <laughs> okay, some little teasing for you, and also for me. <laughs>